Baseball is hard. And they really bunch him up on that one as he swings and misses for the first out. It takes an astronomical level of physical prowess to compete at the highest level. Major League Baseball players have a combination of high-ranking physical attributes like speed, power, and agility, while also sporting incredible vision and hand-eye coordination. Perhaps more than any other sport, baseball is the most difficult to be consistently good at, and even those who remain steady typically only excel at one portion of the game – pitching, fielding, or hitting. It's for these reasons that the truly great talents of the sport stand out and demand the legendary status that's placed upon them. One such player was New York Yankees catcher Yogi Berra, a man who once famously said, baseball is 90% mental, the other half is physical. This quote provided the inspiration for today's video, as it perfectly encapsulates why baseball, in my opinion, is the sport most dependent on human psychology. So today, in this episode of Psychology of Gaming, the series where we look at how psychological principles are worked into games, and how games can affect us psychologically, we take a look at the mental demands of baseball, and how MLB The Show 21 makes a difficult game easier for those of us without the skill to play on the diamond. So let's start with the elephant in the room. Many folks find baseball to be boring and they're certainly justified in that opinion. However, while some moments aren't very exciting, there are others that are very tense and full of incredible excitement. And more than anything, I think baseball is a thinking man's game, as so much decision making goes into every pitch, swing, and fielding decision. It takes not only an incredible physical prowess, but also a conditioned mind to think and act in unison to achieve the best outcomes. In this video, I'd like to highlight a few of the many mental characteristics that help baseball players succeed, such as emotional control, visualization, and anticipation. The key difference between baseball and other sports that demand such high levels of mental acuity is that America's pastime has more downtime within its games. Sports like basketball, football, hockey, and American football have brief moments to reflect during timeouts, but a majority of their gameplay is fast-paced, leaving little room for overthinking. With baseball though, every pitch, every swing of the bat, every fielding opportunity is followed by a short break where every player on the field is given time to think about what just occurred as well as what could happen next. It's truly the sport that builds the most tension, and with tension comes anxiousness. When a pitcher falls behind 3-0 in a count with the bases loaded with his team only up by a run, he's got time to feel the pressure of that moment. And the same is true for a ninth inning batter whose team is down one with a couple outs already. Every swing, good or bad, is followed by a brief window to reflect before the next pitch is thrown. And that's true for the batter and the pitcher. This downtime demands focus from the player, as to not allow doubt or frustration to creep into their minds at pivotal moments in a game. When our minds are allowed to wander unchecked, it's very easy to fall into a negative thought pattern and that can lead to a full meltdown on the diamond. So it's important for baseball players to control their emotions, and in other sports, feelings of rage might lead to an increased performance. They might hit harder in American football or use the adrenaline boost to slam home a jaw-dropping dunk in basketball. In baseball though, emotion typically works against the player, as remaining calm, confident, and collected typically yields the best results. 
losing one's cool on the mound might lead to an implosion where that single half inning of baseball might end up determining the outcome of the game. That's not to say there isn't emotion involved in baseball, there certainly is, but it's the players who are able to remain in control that typically fare the best. Mastery over one's emotion is not an easy task, but it's a pretty important trait for any baseball player regardless of their position. Dedicated baseball players are taught pretty early on about the power of visualization and how to use it as a tool for success. Imagine for a second you're up to bat and the pitcher you're facing can throw a 95 mile per hour fastball but also an 85 mile per hour changeup and will throw in a curveball and a slider for good measure. On his first pitch, he sails a fastball right past you. You blinked and you missed it. On the second pitch, he serves up a changeup, which for your untrained eye still careens in for a strike. Finally, he serves up a slider, which moves a lot during the time it leaves his hand to the time it reaches you. You swing and you miss at all the pitches and wonder how the hell you were even supposed to hit it when you could barely even see the ball. Well, while many professional baseball players do test extremely favorably in terms of vision, perception, and reaction time, the truth is the batter's swing relies mostly on their muscle memory. They'll see a couple of pitches and do their best with that information to guess what the pitcher will throw next and where it will be located. They pick their spots and swing as best as they can. And even these professional players who've spent their whole lives training and playing, the same people who have an incredible physical skill set, vision, and mental acuity only manage to hit the ball about once every four at bats on average. In fact, in 2020, the best batting average in the league belonged to Yankees infielder DJ LeMahieu, who recorded a hit on 35% of his at-bats. The best hitter in the league still failed to record a hit two out of every three at-bats. That's a 65% failure rate, which is still much better than the 75% failure rate of the average player. Imagine the amount of determination it takes to keep your held up high when you're failing 65 to 75 percent of the time. That could be debilitating for a player's confidence and so it's important for them to maintain emotional control. And it's also why batters and pitchers rely on visualization techniques to help them succeed. Recent studies have shown that players who visualize themselves hitting the ball before, during, and after an at-bat typically have better hitting percentages. Our brains are like homing missiles. Once they know what the target is, they find a way to hit it. In other words, what we focus on is typically what our brains are able to achieve. Our focus usually determines our outcome. So, pre-programming our brains for success, in turn, breeds success. And the best hitters are the ones who can remain within this success-driven mindset, even during tough slumps. There's a multitude of other skill sets that professional baseball players have developed in order to compete. They have incredible reaction time, they get very good at making predictions, their superior decision-making allows them to execute tough plays without spending crucial moments thinking, and their mental and physical capabilities work in tandem to ensure the best chances of success. So visualization, controlling one's emotion, and anticipating success are some of the many key mind games that players use to psych themselves up. I've mainly highlighted batters in this brief look, but keep in mind that a lot of these techniques are utilized by pitchers, infielders, catchers, and outfielders as well. Playing baseball requires a high degree of mental toughness and fortitude, and that's before we even get into the necessary physical traits needed to play at a high level. It's for these reasons that baseball is one of the toughest sports to dominate consistently in.
It speaks volumes then that San Diego Studios, the development team in charge of MLB The Show, is able to crank out such a high quality baseball simulation year after year that allows us to enjoy the game without all the trials and tribulations that come with being a real ball player. I've already talked about how hard it would be for the average person to strike out a major league hitter or even make contact on a pitch thrown from a big league hurler. The challenge for the development team then was to take a sport that requires extremely gifted talent and make it accessible for the everyday gamer. And they've succeeded. Regardless of whether you play Diamond Dynasty, Road to the Show, March to October, or Franchise, the team has your back and sets you up for success. Making baseball more accessible is possible in MLB The Show for three distinct reasons. The most obvious, and the one I really won't spend much time explaining, is that we don't need any of the actual physical skill sets that ball players do. If you can hold and operate the controller, you're good. And so, the other two reasons are much more noteworthy, as they relate directly to how San Diego Studios designed the game, and they are the HUD elements and the difficulty sliders. HUD elements are all about giving the player just the right amount of information, enough to allow them to succeed and comprehend the gameplay but not so much that the experience becomes trivialized. This is the case for any game, but it certainly remains true in MLB The Show, but I will admit that the scale tilts a little bit extra in the player's favor. Players are shown the pitcher's arsenal along with the speed ranges for each pitch. They can also choose from various pitching interfaces such as pulse, meter, analog, pinpoints, and more. Each one handles differently, but players can find the method that works for them and use it to pitch efficiently and effectively. And then of course there's the abundance of information relayed to the player after each pitch. You of course have the count, but you're also given information like how the pitch entered the strike zone, how fast the pitch was, how the hitter's timing was on their swing, the direction of the wind, the hitter's stats, and your pitch count. This information allows you to make informed decisions on what to do next, which is kind of what baseball is all about, and it's going to be critical to your experience if you're playing on a higher difficulty. And as a side note, I should mention that that's all the information applying to the pitcher, but there's also HUD elements that affect fielding, like assisted positioning and indicators telling you where pop-ups and fly balls will land and these are other HUD elements that aid in your experience when you're on defense. On to the bottom half of the inning now, and we're up to bat. Hitters are given a lot of the same information as pitchers through the HUD. Real life batters have to rely solely on their eyes to tell them what kind of pitch they just saw, but the guesswork is once again eliminated in MLB The Show to give you a better chance at success. The pitches move at a speed that allows for a reasonable amount of time for the player to track them and react. They're also shown the strike zone before each pitch to better identify if the incoming baseball will be a strike or a ball. And like I mentioned, after each pitch, they can see all the information on it to better predict what might be coming next. And the computer AI is programmed in a way that does make prediction important. For example, if you swing at a slider way out of the zone, there's a fairly good chance that the pitcher will throw that again to see if you learn from your mistake. So all of these HUD elements take out a lot of the mental gymnastics that baseball players have to deal with in every single game. But what really makes MLB The Show such a truly magnificent baseball sim is the number of difficulty options and sliders that are given to the player. There's very general ones, but also many specific options that allow the player to customize their experience to their liking. It might take some time to get a feel for what suits them, but adjusting everything in the menus is super easy. If you want to mash home runs and win every game, you can set yourself up for it. But if you really want to fine tune things to make it as real to baseball as possible, then you can. 
all the tools are put in your hands, and you get to decide the sort of experience that you'll have. So let's take a look at some of these options so that you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. You of course have your standard sliders, but its approach is about quality and quantity. Seriously, there's 38 different sliders that can be set from 0 to 10, including topics on power, contact, stamina, foul frequency, fielding errors, manager tendencies, pitch speed, wind, and injury frequency, amongst many others. Each of these can be adjusted to reach the player's preferred playstyle. There's also a bunch of other options that can be toggled on or off to aid the experience. These include, but aren't limited to, having the strike zone on or off while batting and pitching, the ability to guess the pitch before it's thrown, assisted fielding and base running decisions, pitch confidence displays, throw canceling, the ribbon showing how balls hit off the wall will travel, and much much more. All of these can be turned on to make the experience easier for the player, or left off if you're looking for a purist experience. The point is, many of these difficulty options are provided to make the baseball simulation tagline a meaningful one for MLB The Show 21. You and I both know we'll never make it as a professional baseball player. But, having a game that allows us to experience the thrill of such a difficult sport is praiseworthy. The high levels of customization mean that we can challenge our hand-eye coordination, prediction skills, and reaction times just like Major League batters do. Or, if we want, we can shift the sliders in our favor and dominate at a high level without having to maintain engagement within every moment like baseball players do. And I haven't even mentioned it in this video, but the sound work of the game is of quality as well, meaning every swing of the bat and snap of the glove sounds just as it should as thousands of fans cheer on from the seats. The sights, sounds, and feel of baseball have been expertly reconstructed in MLB The Show 21, and the tools to play how you want have been put firmly in your hands. So, there's only one thing left to do, play ball to the plate as the last chance for his side. Two out here in the ninth. Now a swing and a fly ball. And this should do it. And he'll make the catch. And the Orioles have taken the opener here at home as this ball game is over. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching this episode of Psychology of Gaming. If you couldn't tell, I'm just getting over a cold, so if my voice was a little off in this in this recording, forgive me for that. It, it should be better for the next video, which is going to be a review of Pokemon Snap. Anyway, as always, the Psychology of Gaming series is more about piquing your interest and encouraging viewers to go out and research psychology. So if you did enjoy this video, you should spend some time researching baseball psychology, as there's a lot out there on the subject and many other things that I didn't even cover. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Consider subscribing for more. Follow me over on Twitter at NobNapNarp. And as always, have a nice day and take care.